Welcome to Fun with Failures, the Neckbeard Experience. Well, you guys, I seem to have done it again. I took on way too much, and I guess it's kind of slowing me down. So what I decided to do was to just do one at a time, and when I get up to 20 minutes or so, go ahead and put it out there. I definitely love putting in the extra work for this series. As you'll be able to tell, Natasha Taylor helped me with some of the artwork here, and there's also some of my own. So I hope you enjoy, and coming up soon, I will have subscriber stories. One of the subscribers has her own YouTube channel. You should check her out. She's got some really high energy, and I think you'll enjoy it. I did. I'll have a link to the appropriate sites below. I think that'll be shortly after Magic Mike. So I've got a full plate ahead of me, and they should come out very soon after this. So I hope you look forward to that. So without further ado, let's get started. Today's entry is one of drama, suspense, non-reciprocal feelings, and a rejection-fueled temper tantrum of beardy proportions. And with that, let us begin. Since my fate-altering encounter with the mighty werewolf, I had conscientiously made an effort to try making plans to meet up with Miss Piggy in neutral locations, or whenever Wolfbeard was away. Of course, it wasn't always possible to avoid him. When it came to me being in the general vicinity of his town, he was like a truffle pig catching my scent. He had the most uncanny ability to somehow sense my presence and materialize in said location as if by magic. Miss Piggy and I out to lunch? Oh wow, what are you two doing here? What a coincidence. Mind if I join you? Miss Piggy invites me to come over to hang out at her apartment, while Wolfbeard is supposed to be working until 6. Oh, wow. I just happened to get off work early again. What are the odds I'd find you over here? Don't mind if I do, joining you on the girls' day. Now, mind you, if his work situations were anything otherwise, I genuinely might believe that this was a coincidence. However, Wolfbeard worked for his wealthy father. So basically, whenever he felt like being done with the work for the day, he was done. And he always decided that he was done when I was there. I genuinely tried, you guys. I tried so hard to be friendly with this man. Because he's going to be married to my childhood friend. But god dang it, he made it hard. There were only so many excuses I could accept for his blatantly creepy and downright inappropriate behavior. Before I came to the inevitable conclusion that I would never feel comfortable around this person. And that I needed to at least try and warn Miss Piggy. From what I could only see as becoming a disaster of a marriage and a broken heart. Now before anyone gets too far into thinking, gee calamity, he may be feeding Miss Piggy the delusion of him actually being a werewolf, but that's hardly hurting her and doesn't warrant trying to interfere with their future marriage. I get ya. If that was it, I'd let them play their Princess Mononoke into the sunset. No, what bothered me enough to try to talk this woman out of engagement was the blatant attempt to cheat on her right before her very eyes. Somewhere along the way, Wolfbeard had decided that he was never really in love with Miss Piggy. I would find this out later from word of his own mouth. But early on, it was apparent that he had decided that I would be the new object of his desire, whether I returned the sentiment or not. We're talking about a man that growled at dogs while passing in the street and dramatically clutching at his heart when anyone spoke of nighttime or the moon. He clearly was a true master of subtlety. All sarcasm aside, Wolfbeard blatantly began attempting to put the moves on me about three visits in. Anytime I was over, he would always go out of his way to get as physically close to me as possible, stepping in as close as he possibly can to try to make your personal bubble to shrink and to shrink it about three more inches. Got it? Okay. Now imagine the person invading your said bubble being significantly larger than you, looming as near as you can feel their hot rotten breath on your neck, and catch every whiff of their potent body odor, their large moist arms occasionally brushing you due to them standing so close, and make sure that you are getting an ample dose of their sweat. They squeeze your arm or your wrist with their large soggy hand with every other word. And most importantly, you can't forget that since they loom over you so, they are in the perfect position to stare down your shirt at your cleavage, at every chance they get when they think your eyes are not directly on them. Uncomfortable yet? I'm sorry my brave soldiers, but we've only just begun. 
and the war has many horrors yet to come. Alongside Wolfbeard's frequent soggy squeezes, he likes to try his hand at sweet-talking. He constantly say things like, You'll make some man very happy someday, and I envy that lucky jerk. And, Goth chicks are the sexiest. But his all-time favorite poetics to fall back on were extremely uncomfortable comments directly regarding my body. He would scan me up and down with his greedy little pin eyes and say things like, Oh girl, your tits are so spectacular in that shirt. Or, Honey, that top shows off all the right curves. The wildest part of this is that he would make those vulgar comments in the most ridiculous effeminate voice possible while wobbling his head back and forth and snapping his wrist as if he thought the most over-the-top stereotype of a gay man made it funny and that it made it totally appropriate and a-ok -okay to say it not only in front of my face but in the presence of his own fiance. But perhaps the wildest thing of all this that Miss Piggy was not only all right with this behavior but she actually defended them. That's right. The few times I had alone with her, I blatantly told her how uncomfortable Wolfbeard made me and that she shouldn't put up with him openly flirting with other women because she was worth more than that. But she'd always counter with, Oh, but he was only joking. And, He doesn't mean to come off as creepy. He's just trying to be friendly. Basically, for every concern I raised, she had an excuse prepared and was at the ready. So after going back and forth with Miss Piggy countless times about it, I finally accepted that if she wanted to marry this creep that openly ogled other women and would without a doubt cheat on her, the very second the opportunity presented itself, she would. As much as I cared about the well-being of Miss Piggy's heart after rekindling our old friendship, I also recognized a lost cause and I had to accept that it was not my circus and it was not my sweaty, unkempt monkeys. So my compromise was simple. I would stop bringing it up to Miss Piggy, but I did not want to be around Wolfbeard anymore, whenever humanly possible. Despite how she defended him, I furiously maintained how uncomfortable he made me. And to my surprise, Miss Piggy actually agreed. So over the next couple of weeks, when I saw Miss Piggy, she either came over to my place or we met somewhere outside of her town and seemingly outside of Wolfbeard's sphere of influence. It was fantastic. The uncomfortable aura of hungry eyes boring into me, it was gone. So I truly was able to enjoy catching up with lost time with my friend. It was hugely apparent that our interest had become widely different, but as we spent the majority of our time simply filling each other in on how our lives, families, and towns have changed over the years, this really wasn't a problem. I did start to notice a disturbing theme, however, of every cringy change and harebrained ill-advised decision that she made since leaving high school was somehow linked to Wolfbeard's influence. That being said, these brief few weeks of reprieve were the calm before the storm. The summer quarter had just rolled around, and since we weren't taking class then, it was my vacation. This meant I went back home to my parents' place. That was much closer to Miss Piggy's, and I had a whole lot of free time. Taking advantage of this new spare time, Miss Piggy invited me out to her place for the first time in weeks. I was obviously apprehensive about it, but agreed when she assured me that Wolfbeard would be gone for a whole weekend. As he was on a camping trip with his father, I was also a bit easier to warm up at this point because another friend of mine agreed to come with me. And who doesn't love introducing their old friends to their new friends? The more the merrier. My other friend, who I'll call Lilith, her D&D moniker, I guess I'll be sticking to this nickname theme, She's still one of my best friends to this day. We met after I moved into my old town, and we rode through the absolute wilderness that was our edgy high school emo years together. When you get through that kind of crap together, you'll either want to forget it ever existed, or you'll be blood brothers for life. We are both grown adults now, who practically live in replicas of the Adams Family House though. So maybe the phase will never entirely leave us, or didn't hit as hard, like a slow burn that permanently infects us. But I digress. We're a couple of spooky awesome witches that ride or die together. And god dang it if Wolfbeard didn't make us ride through hell. So Lilith and I piled into my car and made our trip over to Miss Piggy's. I already warned her about the filthy state of the place. And you better believe I told her about the Wolfbeard nonsense. But rather than be apprehensive, 
Lilith maintained an incredibly amused air about the whole thing. Lilith is a creature that mastered all 12 circles of sass, and is an entity I suspect to be composed of nothing but sheer concentrated spite. So I got the impression that she was actually disappointed that the beard would not be available for viewing in his natural habitat. However, to her delight, things that evening would take a turn for the worse. You see, when I pulled into the parking lot, that oh so familiar battle zone of an apartment complex, I spotted not one, but two cars in front of Miss Piggy's unit. There was Miss Piggy's car, and next to it, plain as day, was Wolfbeard's car. A wave of rage burbled up over me, and I froze in my tracks. I no longer wanted to participate in this visit. Lilith, however, she looked positively ecstatic, and she grabbed my arm, yanking me toward the unit. When I finally got to the door, I knocked a little harder than usual. My irritation was apparent. However, Miss Piggy didn't seem to pick up on it in the slightest. And when she opened the door, there oozing proudly on the couch was none other than Wolfbeard. Lilith nearly looked like Christmas had come early, hoping beyond hope to see him bark or climb out another window. I, however, was not in a good mood about the matter. A little curtly, I asked Miss Piggy. Uh... I thought Wolfbeard was joining his dad on a camping trip this weekend, Piggy. Oh well, he was. But when I told him you were coming over today, he decided to stay home instead. The way she said it was as if nothing was slightly unusual. This practically made my blood run cold. Was I living in the Twilight Zone? Why the heck would Miss Piggy tell Wolfbeard I was coming over when I expressly told her that he made me uncomfortable and I didn't want to see him? What's more, why was she okay with him seemingly being so enamored with me that he'd cancel out on a trip with his dad that previously he was super excited about? This whole thing did not sit right with me. As per usual, the moment I entered into the room, Wolfbeard's eyes laser focused directly onto my chest. However, moments later his gaze shifted to the new figure behind me. Upon spotting Lilith, it was his turn to look like Christmas had come. Hello, my darling calamity, he chirped, picking up that stupid effeminate mock accent again. I must say you look positively appetizing as usual. The way he said appetizing, dang near set the hairs on the back of my neck standing straight up. He shifted into what I imagined he thought was a seductive position on the sofa, and he narrowed his eyes at me. But I must say, who is the absolute snack behind you? Lilith shot me a glance of pure euphoric amusement at what her eyes were witnessing before stepping forward and introducing herself. Hi, I'm Lilith. I'm Calamity's friend from high school. It's nice to meet you. There was absolutely no subtlety when Wolfbeard's eyes shifted right down Lilith's cleavage. If my tall and slender frame is busty, Lilith is shorter and curvier and positively voluptuous, to say the least. And oftentimes, her choice of wardrobe only emphasizes this. It was all too much for the poor beard. Sensing a new female in his territory, the mighty Wolfbeard begins his usual courting rituals, prying himself off the sofa like a wad of chewing gum baked in the sun. He waddled to the side to usher my ladies to the now vacant seats. Gallant as he likely saw the act, the clearly defined sweaty butt print that he left seared on the fabric of the sofa left us more than a little hesitant to take a seat. So instead, we opted to sit in a circle on the living room carpet. To precisely no one's surprise, Wolfbeard quickly worked to shove himself between Lilith and I. He sat crisscross while leaning back, his arms coming behind, and dangerously close to touching Lilith and I. The next hour proceeded to be painfully slow and filled with an obscene amount of increasingly vulgar jokes and comments from Wolfbeard. It seemed that as much fun as Lilith had initially thought it would be, this beard was far more powerful than she had first anticipated. He was a creature of darker magics, older magics, and these unholy forces broke through her seemingly impenetrable, war-hardened, emotional battle armor, leaving her shifting uncomfortably and looking at me for escape. At this, I took my window of opportunity to flee, I told Miss Piggy. Uh, hey Piggy, um, Lilith and I have something that, that's just come up and uh, we really have to go. She seemed a little disappointed by the sudden departure, but accepted and bid us farewell. 
However, it was Wolfbeard that really seemed to be the most upset by this. His shoulders dropped and he looked down at the floor. His dirty golf cap cast a heavy shadow on his round face. You really have to go so soon? He asked in a quivering voice. Yeah, sorry about that. I responded with zero interest in the feeding into his act. At this, with great effort, he worked his way back up into a standing position before beginning to waddle in our direction. Well, that's a real shame, he almost whispered. I gave up spending time in the great wilderness to be able to hang out with you. You should know what a big deal that is to me. I kind of need to run wild and free in the forest. It's in my blood. It helps us keep control of the beast. Lilla shot me a look, but he kept approaching us. Well, at the very least, you can give me a hug before you go. Before I could protest, his moist, flabby arms were crushing around me, pinning my arms to my side. I was enveloped in a cloud of body odor that I previously never would have thought possible, and I had to fight the powerful urge to retch. He squeezed way too hard, as if to smash me as close to him as possible, before finally releasing me from his bear trap. Then approached Lilith with the same expectancy, despite her literally just meeting him. She, however, wasn't quick enough to evade him, and found herself smashed into the same stinking embrace that I had just been in moments before. As soon as she was released, the two of us fled to my car. However, over my shoulder I called. Miss Piggy, can you join us for just a moment? Quickly, she hurried out around the corner. Once there, I started to open up the floodgates on her. Piggy. I'm really irritated that Wolfbeard was here, especially after you all but promised that he wouldn't be here. I'm sick and tired of all of the gross comments he constantly makes and how he tries to touch me all of the time. And it's not just me. He's been making Lilith uncomfortable as well. I didn't want to have to be around Wolfbeard again if he couldn't control himself. The scene must have looked intense to any onlookers. We're on the Pacific Northwest. So even though it was in the beginning of summertime, it was a gray and cloudy day, and it had begun to pour down heavy rain. However, the drama turned up even more. We heard what sounded like a cross between a wounded cry and an attempt to howl like a wolf. <laughs> I looked out across the window to the corner of the building. Wolfbeard had crept out behind Miss Piggy, and he had been listening in on our discussion. Apparently, my declaration of not wanting him near me, unless he refrained from attempting to grope me, was far too painful of a blow, as he dramatically ran off toward the wooded trail. Seeing this, Miss Piggy legitimately stifled a sob, and she cried after him to come back. But it was no use. The Alpha Beard had fled into the woods beyond, likely already transforming into a powerful beast of brood in the shadows. Seeing Miss Piggy in near hysterics, Lilith and I felt like we had no choice but to take her back inside and try to calm her down. She starts rambling and raving about his condition. We can't leave him alone like that out there. When he transforms while he's upset, he could be reckless and get himself caught. It's not safe, she sobbed. After 15 minutes of consoling a distraught Miss Piggy, her phone rang. To seemingly no one else but Miss Piggy's surprise, it was Wolfbeard. She dramatically cooed into the phone at him, asking him where he was and if he was okay. Having trouble hearing him, she switched the phone to speaker mode. What met her ears next was the most pathetic croak I've ever heard. Piggy, I need help. My transformation was too quick and emotional and I lost control. I ran wild and aimless in my pain, and somehow I've got myself stuck. I ran into the clay flat, and the rain has made it like a tar pit. I'm stuck, and my transformations weakened me too much to get out. Please help me. I'm growing weaker yet. He dramatically finished before hanging up the call. At this, Miss Piggy went nuts again, screaming, We need to call the ambulance or the police to go rescue him. <laughs> It took 10 more minutes to calm her down, and she only did this after I called her brother to ask him to go check the woods. He agreed, and Miss Piggy calmed down enough that Lilith and I had felt that it was okay to finally leave. I didn't know what happened to Wolfbeard, but I knew it wasn't anything as dramatic as he made it seem, and I didn't want to play into his ploy for attention, as being seen as waiting for him upon his return. Though I wasn't there for his retrieval, Miss Piggy's brother is actually pretty normal and a nice dude. Later called me to tell me the harrowing journey. And oh, what a journey it was. You see, it was raining something awful that day, and it did make the trails terribly mucky. 
but there was no dangerous tar pit like Clay Flat that can trap emotionally distressed werewolves. No. When Miss Piggy's brother went to check on the trail, he found Wolfbeard face down in a literal mud puddle, his phone in his hand dramatically held out in front of him, as if he gave out to the elements while calling for help. Apparently he was none too happy to see Miss Piggy's brother there instead of us, and all but made him single-handedly yank his oversized girth out of the puddle himself. To this day, I can't get the mental image out of my head of this grown man plotting out a plan to make these heartless women feel bad and that they should apologize and spend all their extra time with him, stalking through the rain and windswept back trails of the forest, searching for the perfect mud puddle, and then carefully nestling himself face down in it, careful to keep his phone clean. The sight must have been spectacular, but I digress. This was just the first of Wolfbeard's spectacular tantrums, and this was before he even confessed his feelings about Milady. You see, he didn't give up easy, and as if beaching himself in a shallow slope puddle wasn't enough, he'd have to try a different approach to force me to love him. But that is another story for another day. I'll catch you all again the next time in part 3. Sad Panda If you enjoyed these stories, please leave a like and subscribe for more. All stories from Reddit and other external sites are linked in the description below. If you have any stories you'd like to share, you can send it to my email at funwithfailure at gmail.com. And for just $1 a month at Patreon, you can get advanced audio broadcast. The link is in the description.